the Forty or Tea podcast. Do you know? Do you know of any any green flags in a in a potential um, <laughs> healthy friendship or relationship? So it's sort of um, spiraling from what I was saying earlier. Like, if you think you want to change someone, I think also like the feelings inside that make you want to do that. So, like, if you've got if you're calm inside, like there's no adrenaline. Do you know what I mean? Like the media has sort of twisted all of our perceptions on what healthy love looks like, especially when you first meet. And they're like, oh, you should have butterflies in your tummy. You should feel all excited. Your heart should be pounding. And I think actually that's not quite true. I think if you have calmness inside and you feel at home and you feel safe with them, then that's a far better response. Yeah. <laughs> I think I that think I think that's a far better response because the butterflies and the heart thumping, that's an adrenaline response. That's your past self saying, Hey, there's a there's a warning and you you know your past self I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, I get I get what you mean. It's um I think I think there there is a very there is a very heavy like um emphasis on like this kind of roller coaster of emotions and like adventure hot and cold <laughs> st- st- start start like style of communication yes or style of style of having a relationship which i i know it it can be something that is exciting and it plays on your mind and you know it's up and down and it can be good and then it's bad and there's all these these different circumstances that really draw you into that person or that relationship and i think that's something that both men and women do or or non-binary individuals do it is something that i feel draws a lot of us in and i also think it's one of it's it's kind of this big kind of lie that our brain um enforces that if we don't feel that kind of somewhat strain or difficulty within a relationship then it's not worth pursuing or it's not it's not right or it doesn't feel right to like just feel like able to talk to someone and feel feel open to talk talk to somebody um you know it's 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 interesting i mean like people people nowadays they get (laughs) they get like turned off by people who are very direct in how they feel about people like how they feel about you oh my gosh yes you know, I think you're nice, and and I just want to let you know, I do like you, and it would be cool to to do something. Like people don't like that. It's got to be so this direct. kind of weird, <laughs> indirect like game that you've got to play of like, oh, I sort <clears> of <throat> like you, but maybe not too much. You've got to <laughs> fight, and you've got to got to convince me. And it's, but I um, think that's another really like a a there was so a green flag is that a relationship might actually feel boring because if you grew up associating love with like violence or shaming drama Mm. arguments if even if there were good intentions and good efforts you know you grew up learning how to love on that survival mode and you know Mm. it's not your fault but it does mean that love that looks and feels calm that is direct and emotionally regulated can be so boring (laughs) <laughs> that yeah. you can use this as something bad because it's not matching the love that you are taught to be real. The, you know, like extreme fighting and shouting, thrown objects, sudden declarations of hate and hating each other. It, you know, you can feel like passion and care, but because the emotions are so strong, but it's not real. Like extreme highs and lows of insecure relationships can bring excitement or feelings of passion. And, you know, it is easy to mistake those feelings for the strength mm. of healthy love. And that's that's the problem because being with someone who you can depend on, someone who is straightforward and direct, someone who you can trust with your whole being, you know, it, it will feel a bit boring at times because that unpredictability isn't there. Your adrenaline is not firing all over the place, or, mm. you know, wondering why you're walking on eggshells or whatever. Like, mm. Mm. And it's and so it's easy good. if you're not getting that in a, in a healthy relationship to mm. be like, Oh, I just go on, on online. I'll, I'll download an app. Like I'll go find this excitement somewhere else. So like it's just mm. it's such so, such so, so much of an easier thing to do if you're not feeling stimulated enough in a in a relationship. And 
Yeah, yeah. People will find other ways to seek it out. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because any because I have quite a few like female friends, and I, I, you know, they tell me about like their dating life and relationships and stuff, and almost always, like if if they go with the people who don't kind of. <laughs> provide them this kind of roller coaster of this emo- emotion and stuff they 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 actually find that over the long term it's a really sort of happy kind of fulfilling relationship it's yeah. not it's not like this crazy roller coaster kind of passionate journey yeah. but you know relationships are not not about that really it's it's about finding someone who meets your needs and is willing yeah. to compromise on your needs and you're willing to compromise on their needs it's like it's it's funny because like the idea of love it's very very much like a it's like a, a self-sacrificing kind of defeatist emotion and like you know like you you know love is best expressed when you are giving up uh being around that person for that other person's own benefit like that's <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's got a completely feeling you know happy happy for the person and, and having the best per the, the person's best intentions are mm. and it's not always conducive to 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 what a relationship is which is you know it might might sound cold of me to say but it is like a it's you know you you are crafting something that's kind of like an agreement or like a <laughs> Yeah. Somewhat set of rules and yeah. somewhat things that you help them with and things that you help them with, uh, they help you with rather. And I think part of it is also that, um, like the green flag that if things do go wrong, you can, and even if there are some unhealthy little things that you might shout at each other or you might not listen mm. straight away, mm. but I think the green flag is the intention and the recovery afterwards. So, like, if you recognize if there's good intentions and you know, even though they're screaming at you, they still love you and they're still going to treat you kindly and they're still going to respect your boundaries. But also that recovery afterwards, you know, they're not going to sort of have such an ego or whatever that they don't apologize. So you know that Mm. apology will be sincere and they will mean it and they have all the good intentions there. And also like you sort of said, sort of spiraling off the excitement bit is that the emotional regulation also needs to be challenged too in the sense that the media has this idea of what love is people think that they need to meet someone and that person is going to fix all of their problems like that person is responsible for their happiness and their emotional yeah. growth and that's not true like that's Two not what... of a whole <laughs> yeah and it's um and it's you know we need to we need to look after our own emotional health and learn how to challenge ourselves and learn how to communicate properly so that we can treat them better and they need to do the same so they can treat us better and mm. it's both of us knowing that so that we can thrive mm. <laughs> i forgot what i was saying no 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 it's great i mean <laughs> i i would also add that you know that there are some key like personality kind of traits or, or ways of communicating that I think is yeah. helpful as a green flag in a, in a relationship because hey up YouTube just popping on to say if you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far why not check out the full episode which you can find on my YouTube channel on Spotify Google Apple pretty much anywhere that you would want to find it and if you have enjoyed this please make sure to like Uh, Drop me a subscribe if you want to see more stuff from me and drop a comment down below because it really does help with the algorithm. Other than that, you can check out my Instagram, which is in the link tree down below in all of my videos. There's daily blogs, weekly updates on the podcast and lots of other stuff that you won't find here on YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed this clip and I'll let you get back to it. So like uh, non-reactivity is one that I feel is quite important because... It's one I'm really bad at, but I try. (laughs) In any neurodiverse relationship, there will always be some element of miscommunication, Mm. particularly when it comes to confrontational or emotional things. And if your first reaction is to blow everything out of proportion 
and like you know if 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 this person is someone to be like oh hey actually you know did you mean that in that way or you you kind of yes could, yeah. you, could you explain that in a different way or you know that there's there's less of that the flip the flicking the switch and just going that's exactly like crazy it. crazy at them it's <laughs> like it's taking a step back and saying like oh actually is this something that is just a miscommunication and and quite often it is because you know if someone two people have the best intentions for each other it's you know yeah me sorry have you finished my bad yeah yeah go for sorry. it sorry yeah. <laughs> um me a year ago not a year ago, like a decade ago, you know, I argued completely differently and I would get very reactive and I would assume things that weren't right. And, you know, I was young and I think we all do that to some extent. Mm. And I think the main Mm. thing is that consciously, like while you're in the midst of arguing, you have to consciously be like, this person might not intend the bad thing that I'm assuming. I need to get their actual intentions to be like, when you say this, what do you actually mean? And you need to like openly communicate and it's taking a breather so that you're not actually screaming at them and doing all of that emotional reactivity stuff. And I do think if you are very, if you understand, you know, your partner's good intentions and you validate them, it, it, what's it called diffuses the tension and it makes you know because once you both feel heard and understood you know like that person's talking and you're not there sort of boiling and sort of knowing exactly what you're gonna say the moment they stop talking like they're talking you listen they stop talking you think of what you're gonna say (laughs) yeah so that you know that it aligns with your values and what you love about your partner like and getting to that stage of not responding while they're talking, not thinking of your answer, you know. And it's also, it's like, we need to sort of get out of the habit of fighting to win and fighting to prove a point. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think me a decade ago wasn't so good at that. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people are, no. though not many of us will admit it. And I think yeah. if there is that good intention that people want to grow, there is no shame in that because we mm. all have these trauma, you know, defense modes from gaslighting, from being growing up and having to panic, explain everything because you're autistic and no one understands what you're <laughs> anything about you. And, you know, and, you know, it's all understandable and there's no shame. But I do think we do need to adapt to like a growth mindset where we are actively trying to, step back breathe understand yes. then then approach mm. like rather than ah and then sorry and then <laughs> it's it's almost like you know it's it's definitely that aspect of non-reactivity and being able to talk about things and get over miscommunications is pretty much the make and break in a lot of friendships and relationships that i've had because it's it is a common thing and and some people they do it right for a while and then they forget that you're autistic or they forget <laughs> that you you're different and you have different communication styles and then it becomes an issue and in times things, of high stress drizzle. that that defense mechanism comes back and you end up going back to that self so it's a very mm. conscious very yeah. conscious decision every time something happens that you need to push back the defense mechanism not shaming yourself not shaming them i just realized that i interrupted you i'm so sorry <laughs> No, no, it's fine. Um, I was, I think uh, another aspect for me would be, um, you know, like we had that aspect where I was talking about, you know, just because they think that they understand autism isn't necessarily like a good thing. Um, if they haven't understood you personally, I think having a natural curiosity in you or autism in general is all, always going to be good because there, there is a lot of... Uh, there is a big communication and empathy barrier between <laughs> you and that person. And if they have the curiosity to explore that with you, I think that tends to be quite, quite productive green flaggy kind of thing. You know, if they, they're genuinely interested in what you're about and how you think and feel and perceive. And 100%. Open-mindedness, I'd say. It could, it could also be part and part there. Like, are they willing to 
take on board your experiences with with an open mind and not you know be, be able to kind of try and put themselves in your shoes <laughs> um and are you able to do that with them like i think that that's de- that could definitely be a green flag as well um i don't think there's anything else that i could could really say i mean if you just generally feel calm and, and then we feel quite stable um you don't need to be chasing this idea of happiness but if you are content and you're calm and you're stable and you feel valued and you feel like um sort of you you feel respected and you feel like um safe safe (laughs) yeah um i'd say that that's that's a pretty pretty good green flag although it can you know as we've said not always be the most exciting (laughs) passionate kind of adventure journey kind of thing um but who would want that it's exhausting <laughs> for you know, at some point you're gonna get exhausted by it and people do it's like <laughs> <laughs> i suppose it's also like recognizing that no relationship is perfect and like comparison to other relationships will not help anyone <laughs> if hmm. you're trying to be like an i don't know a, a, what are they called it like an instagram like model or whatever if you're trying to be like their relationship it's just it's only going to cause more problems because again it's that pedestal isn't it and you need to yeah you need to sort of have listen to your partner's boundaries and understand their mm. story and like what you were just saying you need to learn about them and want to, like you can't have an instagrammer's wedding or whatever because it has nothing to do with you and your partner like you have to well it's it's, it's it, always suppose. like tailored and yeah it's like the whole thing about you know you don't see the athletes in training you and you see them on the podium yeah you know you true. don't see their failures you just see the success that they had you know so and that's a really good point because every failure can help you learn how to grow together if it's a healthy relationship with good mm. intentions because a lot of relationships will be a little bit red flaggy and it does make it complicated but if you can ascertain the intention behind behind it like we were talking mm. about oh my gosh i totally forgot what i was saying no what no were, what, i i, I what understand were you what saying? you mean it's what were you saying having, having I, think, I think the difficulty for me is like the intention can be like hard to figure out sometimes when you're autistic <laughs> I uh, guess people so can difficult. say what their intentions are, but <laughs> you know, as you said, like as much as you can, you have to look at the long run. Like you have to look at situations or relationships and kind of like a zoomed out approach. Like is these perhaps red flaggy, toxic behaviors mm. just kind of a drop in the ocean, or do they do they seem to be like like um? existent at many sort of different parts during yeah. the relationship or how you know, oft- how often is your adrenaline firing up how often are you feeling like sick or jittery yeah. or in pain or poorly like it's all part and parcel of it sometimes hmm. even when you your emotions don't know or your mind might not know but your body might and listening to your body is a very good way to ascertain those red flags because if something's not feeling right and you feel disrespected, your body will tell you. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Or, or a case if you're Alexa Fiamic, it might tell you a few days or a, or a week or so <laughs> yeah, later. <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> Making that connection. And then you can have the fun conversation where you, you send a long, 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 long message after <laughs> saying that it's okay, that it's actually not okay, which is always fun. Um, if you relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 